Our next candidate uh, is Rita Harris, who is running for a county commissioner in Douglas County. Welcome, Rita. Hey, thank you for having me. Um, uh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, no, no, go ahead. So it was, uh, it was, it was so much fun going down to Douglas County a couple months ago and talking with your your group about running for office. Yeah, thank you for coming down. We really appreciate that. You had a lot of good information about running for office and. Um, a lot of what this this radio show kind of stands for is, is kind of aligned with what I stand for in my campaign. I often get asked why I'm running, um, and it's really because the county commissioner's office role throughout my entire adult lifetime uh, has failed to address these sort of systemic problems that we have in balancing our economy and our environment, in balancing prevention and education and public safety with the systemic long-term issues that we're seeing. Um, and there tends to be a focus on, on dividing these problems and having that sort of climate of division and pointing fingers rather than just really taking accountability and looking for actual real solutions. I don't think that a lot of the problems that we have here in Douglas County are systemically about conflict. I think that we all want the ability to grow and to have housing and jobs and public safety and everyone is concerned with this, but it's not being addressed at the county commissioner's office. It's being ignored. Um, by running, I want to first off ensure that the incumbent Tim Freeman is challenged and that he just doesn't slide into the position unchallenged and, you know, kind of by default by getting more than 51% of the votes. And that there's there's a voice in the in the candidacy that stands up for having an accountable, responsible, transparent and responsive county government. So let's go to the slide so uh, people can, can figure out where Douglas County is. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, so uh, it's it's got a very interesting shape and it spans a lot of acreage. So I have no idea what they were thinking when they drew this. Um, so Douglas County starts south of Eugene. Uh, and uh, uh, what's interesting about it is that I believe most of the population is on the I-5 corridor that goes right through the middle. Yeah. <clears throat> But then it, it straddles the coastal range and goes over and, and picks up uh, a bit of the coast. Yes. So it's it must be challenging to uh, campaign there over such large distances. It, it's a little challenging, but, but Reedsport and, and that coastal area is really only about an hour and 15 minute drive away from where I am. And I think that you bring a, a good point about how large our county is and that the county's commissioner's office traditionally and recently has sort of um, centered itself just at the county seat. And they're not really doing the outreach and, you know, town hall meetings and having a, a more open process for ensuring that the voice of the electorate is heard in our government. So the other uh, half of the slide shows the sort of uh, uh, <clears throat> political breakdown of your county. Uh, the majority are uh, Republicans. Yeah. And then the next largest segment are the non-affiliated voters, which is that growing group of people. And then the Democrats are third. And then uh, it really breaks down into uh, small change after that. Yes. Yeah. So, how, um, so you're you're running for a non-partisan position, so everyone's going to be able to vote for you. Yes. How are you How are you crafting your message to uh, appeal across party lines? Well, I think that, like I said, the the systemic problems that we're having in Douglas County that have been growing for quite a while the the housing, the economy, the county budget, public safety, all those things that that the public voice is, is saying are problems that need to be addressed, they, they really come down to, does the community trust the county government? Is the county government adhering to the spirit of the First Amendment and ensuring that people have an equitable right 
to petition the government with their grievances and are they listening to those grievances are they looking for solutions or are they entrenched as they have been for a long time on just one one solution rather than being open and opening up the decision making criteria and ensuring that we're growing as a community that we're we're researching why we have such a housing problem um, and looking at where our public safety funds should really be coming from and how they should be being used. Betsy, do we have any questions for the line? Apparently not. <laughs> so you, uh, you, your county closed the library, if I remember correctly. Is that true? Yes. Has, yes, it been it has, it, has it been reopened? No. Oh, that's no, horrible. And that's one of the things, again, that goes down to as as voters, as people in this community, um, can we trust the decision making process that has been, been used in the county commissioner's seat by people that we vote into the county commissioner's office? Um, the public perception right now is no, we cannot trust their decision making criteria, their ability to ensure that uh, we're we're supporting the things that that prevent um, you know a worsening of our community and we need to have more support in education in the economy in the housing market in public safety we need to address these issues that plague all of us regardless of our person of our party politics um, everybody in Douglas County sees these issues Housing is, is huge, and there's no information in the county since the 80s about how much housing we have, you know, what our housing supply is, how much does housing cost compared to median income, um, how do we make sure that our economy is prosperous and growing so that people can continuously have employment. We are not looking at these problems at the county level. And it, it needs to be done. There needs to be better research, better action planning, and a better focus on allowing the voice of the people to come into our county politics, our county commissioner's seat, and ensure that decisions are being made that support what the people of this community really need. So the uh, <clears throat> today's the 15th. Of, the ballots will drop in about 10 days. I know. How are you going to spend the next week? talking to people as much as possible, <laughs> being on the phone, um, making sure that I'm, I'm focused on the, the rights of each individual person to have their voice heard, to be involved, and that their grievances and concerns are being addressed with you know, research, critical thinking, critical planning, making sure that we can estimate what our future outputs are going to be and where our future inputs are coming from. Um, so what are, what are, what is the, the top three issues that, that you want to focus on if you are elected? I'm definitely focusing on in increasing public meetings with openness having more interactivity, more open to comment, um, ensuring that our public records have access, lowered fees and online accessibility. And I definitely want to increase our citizen involvement, make sure that our county seat is open to criticism. Um, even me, if, when I am elected, I'm open to listening to people and understanding other solutions. I might not have all the answers, and I guarantee that our county commissioners now don't have all the answers. There are other other issues and answers and ways to solve problems out there, but nobody can address them as far as the voting population because we only have county commissioner meetings at Wednesdays at 9 a.m. For a county that is as large as you shown with about 100,000 citizens right around there at any given moment. So part of really solving the big problems that we have. And those big problems are housing supply, the economy, and not just the economy, but making sure that people have consistent and long-term living wage employment. 
Uh, there is a budget crisis that we're facing that needs to be addressed with actual solutions, not just a sort of traditional authoritarian, the budget decision is right because I say it's right. There's no decision-making criteria that's available. There's no way for the average person to find out what exactly is going on and why certain funds were allocated to certain areas and other things such as our public library and certain positions in the county government were just ended with little or no input or um, ability to find other solutions. Wow. Betsy, any, any questions from the line? Uh, no, there aren't any questions of Rita. So Rita, if, if uh, people want to support you, how do they find out about your campaign? Um, my email address is Rita for Douglas County at gmail.com. And my phone number is 541-378-7543. Um, I am currently a full-time employee and I work up in the woods sort of with at-risk youth. So if you call or email me and I don't get back to you until the next day, it's because I don't have service when I'm working. So. Well, thank you for being on the show today and thank you so much for running. Uh, you're doing exactly what more people need to do uh, so that we can restore health to our democracy. I, I wholly agree. And I hope that this sort of promotes other people to be involved in, in partisan and nonpartisan races. Things only change when we choose to be invested and involved in making those changes. So I really appreciate you um, giving me this, this format to talk to everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Have a great day and, and good luck on the balance of your campaign. Thank you.